Okay, yesterday we have, yesterday we covered the third component of right speech, which is to abstain from harsh speech. It can come in many forms. One is abusive speech here. Second is insult. The third is sarcasm, which I usually fell for. And yesterday, Sai Kiang also mentioned uh, it's due to influence of people around us that we fall into this kind of habit. So Shai Kiang shared her story about her grandma. Literally, it's a kaki Is there a gold in your mouth? That's why you never, never talk or speak. So that is harsh speech. Today, we are going to dive into the last component of right speech, the fourth component. What is the fourth component? Abstaining from idle chatter. Sampha palapa viramani. He avoids idle chatter and abstains from it. He speaks at the right time. In accordance with facts, speaks what is useful, speaks of the Dharma and the discipline. His speech is like a treasure, uttered at the right moment, accompanied by reason, moderate and full of sense. So this is the section directly taken from the Sutta. It shall be from the same Sutta, Aet Amutara uh, Nikaya 10, 1, 6, 7. Yeah. So, I think the whole chunk of this is taken a lot from this Anguttara Nikaya 10176. Okay, for the explanation of next paragraph, maybe we can get Brother Waken to read. Idle chatter is pointless talk, that, that paragraph, right? Yes. Okay. Idle chatter is pointless talk, speech that lacks purpose or depth. Such speech communicates nothing of value, but only stirs up the defilements in one's own mind and in others. The Buddha advises that idle talk should be curbed and speech restricted as much as possible to matters of genuine importance. In the case of a monk, the typical subject of the passage just quoted, his words should be selective and concerned primarily with the Dhamma. Lay persons will have more need for affectionate small talk with friends and family, polite conversation with acquaintances, and talk in connection with their line of work. But even then, they should be mindful not to let the conversation stray into pastures where the restless mind always eager for something sweet or spicy to, to feed on, might find the chance to indulge its defiling propensities. Thanks, Waken. Okay, we have covered two paragraphs. Any comments or questions? How do you, okay, second, uh, anything? This is the one that I don't know. <laughs> I always get into uh -huh. because we need to communicate with people. So we started talking about the weather, about the whatever, and then we just go on and on, you know, especially when ladies get together. <laughs> we talk about clothes, we talk about, you know, hair, we talk about uh, Shopee, we talk about everything under the sun. So I think, um, yeah, it is the most difficult for me, uh, yeah, out of this, uh, uh, for, you know, <laughs> long speech. Uh, maybe I'll just say an example. Uh, you know, I used to, I, I'm, I go for food distribution as a volunteer, so I'm the driver. So somebody will sit beside me uh, sometimes it's Pante, 
uh, but sometimes it's lay, lay person. So I see if Bante no issue because he will not talk to you. <laughs> you know, he will just be, you know, hmm. uh, if, if I go the wrong road, he will highlight to me, oh, you have to do a left turn because he, he will do such a mind that. Then if a lay follower sit beside me, then we'll start talking and talking. And sometimes I go wrongly, you know, to the wrong road. <laughs> Recently, I'm supposed to go uh, to Jalan Tantaram. So in the CTE, I just go on and on and say, oops, my mind was thinking about Spooner Road because we have two destinations. We have to go Jalan Tantaram first before going to Spooner Road. So I was just too caught up talking, talking, you know, I <laughs> the church. So by the time I realized, oops, we have passed, you know, the, the moment exit, and then, uh, well, have to do a, a U-turn, that kind of thing. And then, that's why Pante, he always advised us not to talk so much, especially when we're volunteering, we're cutting up vegetables and all that, we're packing. He said, you should concentrate on what you're doing. <laughs> Don't talk. <laughs> because once we start talking, right, then sometimes we will pour the gravy a bit more, a bit less, you know, the kind of thing. And yeah, so have to keep watch of this. Lah, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's my sharing. Okay, okay, interesting. Thanks for sharing. Well, I think, like Saikyang mentioned, this, prob this component probably affects ladies the most. <laughs> okay, we can. No lah, we got only affect ladies. No lah. <laughs> no, no, Don't worry I, about I, it. I'm not saying <laughs> only ladies, but affect them more than I am. I, I'm I'm not so sure about that. I'm not so, I'm sure. Not so sure about that. Okay. I I was gonna say just now, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say just now that that this is very, very typical, very, very common. Like this particular, this particular practice, you might say, or this particular activity, idle chatter. It's so common everywhere. Everywhere people do this, and and obviously, I, I would say it's not not specific, not necessarily just to do with like the topic of conversation. I mean, some of the some of the topics that Saikam brought up, I think those are like you know, if you're talking about shopping or clothing and houses or, or whatever, even those topics might might be okay, like might be useful or might be productive. Of of course, it depends on how you engage in that conversation, right? You could engage in a very unproductive way. I, I know, I know, right? So that would that would of course uh, constitute idle chatter. So I was just gonna say this is so common and and everywhere we see it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> would you like to give some example we can, that you personally have maybe? What do you talk about? <laughs> I was I was thinking, uh, I was thinking like you know there are the ten, ten uh, unwholesome deeds right the, the the list of ten unwholesome deeds and then the list of ten wholesome deeds. Among the ten unwholesome deeds, one of them is idle chatter. I was thinking, yeah, <laughs> wow, that that's a lot of that's a lot of people and and that's very common. Examples, examples, there are many examples I suppose. So the standard examples are like you know like during lunch at work. So sometimes at work you're doing doing work. Then at lunch you go out with colleagues. You go out to eat with colleagues, and that's when that's when the idle chatter begins a lot because you want to really maybe you, you want to really take a break from work, I suppose, and then you want to have some fun, I suppose. Then then that that occurs quite often. Okay, since just now just now you all don't believe right uh, about <laughs> you all don't believe it's just women, right? <laughs> Sorry, you don't you all don't believe it's not just women, right? <laughs> So men talk about a lot of things, man. My goodness, men talk about um, men talk about uh, uh sports a lot, <laughs> uh, football, uh, NBA, and so on. Okay, again, like I said, those are not necessarily bad things to talk about, but it can go on, uh. uh men talk about that a lot. Uh, men talk about women a lot, a lot. Okay, those of you who are women, you all don't know, uh, Okay, but men talk about women a lot. <laughs> okay, and so on, uh, Okay, <laughs> yeah. So um, and men talk about. I don't know. I have a bunch of friends, right? They talk about watches a lot. I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether this is just a guy's thing or maybe it's just it's both a men and women thing. I, I'm not sure. But like men talk about watches a lot. Some lah, maybe not all men. But some men, they really, they really, well, they really, they really research the watches are like they are, a, like they are a scholar, you know. <laughs> they can tell you all the, they can tell you all the important brands and how they're, how they're used and what they signify and so on. Oh, they, they really, <laughs> they're really a master in watches so yeah so those are a few examples lah, that they talk about mm. 
Uh, okay. Thanks, Waken, for revealing our secrets. Uh, so as mothers, we actually talk a lot about children, <laughs> especially a few mothers get together. Uh, we always talk about our children and uh, we always complain about these. About <laughs> why never study? Why play games? You know, you know, we've often do that as well. So I think it depends on who you are with. You tend to like, because like-minded, right? Yeah. So when we Dharma friends, of course, you talk about Dharma stuff. Lah. I cannot talk to you about like, children, right? You're like, what well, this mother? We're talking, you know, very complaining. Yeah. So yes, I have my big share of mother's talk <coughs> with other mothers. Yeah. Yeah, this is very interesting. And I think the mother's networks has become a pandemic in my hometown. You know, all, all among my peers, all the parents, at least the mothers, they form a group, a very strong connection of networks. And then whatever information that's happening to the kids, within seconds, I assure you, everyone will know. <laughs> I think we could not stir his head, seems like it's happening in Malaysia as well. So it's not just my hometown, but probably Malaysia, Singapore, all share this common trend. The mother's network. <laughs> Very interesting. Thanks for sharing, Julian. Okay, Xinghui. Um, then can I ask how how then do we differentiate like uh wanting to build rapport and build relationship versus this kind of idle chatter? Any advice? Uh, Yeah, this is actually a good question. Um, okay, maybe let's see. Okay, the, the text does not say this, but there is some, or I think there is also some importance to, you know, make a small talk to build a rapport with the person. I think so, the text talk about it. Okay, let me take a Yeah, look. they say about lay, lay disciples. You can do all this, but you just don't get carried away. Um, you can have, you know, yeah. This part here. Yeah. yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. You have to be mindful, you know. Because of this restless mind. So yeah, this is what the text say, but how do we bring it back to our real life? Um I, I think at the start it's good to initiate small talks, but let, uh, I think like the, like the text says, don't let it stray away from the whole point of the conversation. Initially, even during work meeting, I try to initiate small talks as well, like try to make, uh, make a joke. <laughs> and then not, not exactly trying, but just to make uh, the situation lighter. Like for example, when <laughs> someone is late for the meeting, well, this, this can probably fall into sarcasm. Then I say, uh, good evening. Yeah, it was a morning meeting. Then I say, good evening. Yeah, when they come in. Yeah, but everyone laughs. But I, I wasn't trying to be sarcastic. I, just, I was just trying to make the situation lighter. That's one. So in that sense, I also feel like I built a rapport with my colleagues and my boss as well. Yeah. So, but, but that only consists of a small portion of my talks. Most of the time, we are focused on the topics at the table. But this is, I think, the judgment that each individual has to make. Yeah, it is not so easy to pinpoint uh, at which point it has gone all the way to either chapter, at which point we are still building rapport. So I feel like we have to exercise our own discretion and judgment. How about others? What do you guys think? I think for lay for a start, um, so long as it doesn't affect your work, uh, like just now the example that I gave, you know, so one day's advice is when you're supposed to do a work, so you pay full attention to what you're doing at the moment, and then you stop all this idle chatter completely so that you can focus on 
what you are doing. Then you get the correct result. Then after that, you know, he doesn't stop us if we are chatting after we finish our work. He doesn't say anything. It's only when we are doing our duty, our work, then he said to have full concentration, yeah, to focus. Yeah. So I think that's that's my share. Yeah, I think I can give a good example. If you chat too much until you miss the turn, uh, that, that's probably where you should draw the line. <laughs> so, what do you think, Singhui? Um, thank you for, for pointing uh, all this out. Um, I mean, if it's like having a specific task to do, then it will be easy. But let's say with your uh, family members, um, if you are finding out about their day, so it will naturally lead from one thing to another. So then, um, uh, yeah, because you don't have a purpose, a, a specific end goal in mind, so then it will, it might potentially just go on and on. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but I think, yeah, this one, sometimes it's also good to know what's happening in their life. So that's why we ask, you know, and then this is also a bit of a connection of, oh, I know how's your day like. And then if they, they have any, let's say, issue or trouble, we can also help them in that way. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is individual's judgment and discretion. But thanks for raising the question. Uh, I think, can I suggest something? I think yes. we could instill useful speech when we're talking. Maybe we use the word useful. Um, even when we talk, we can make it useful. And by being useful, we, be, we are creating harmlessness and wisdom. So I think talk can also be conducive to our practice. So it's how we talk also. Okay, for example, if let's say a mother and mother talking, right? And a mother get very anxious over the child. Well, she starts, the more that she talks, the more she gets like angry over the child. So maybe as a mother, we can send some empathy to a mother. I can really feel how you feel as a mom. But maybe, you know, you can just do this. Maybe you feel better. So it's uh, more useful to the mother to peace, make her mind more peaceful in that sense. So we can engage that kind of useful talk and that can still put our mindfulness and practice in place. But if the mother starts to like gossiping about another mother, for example, also you feel very uncomfortable right? because let's say that's something not your intention or why you're having this conversation. Then you can deviate that conversation and bring into a subject that is more like meaningful to each other. Like deviate her or she and say that, oh, what about the, uh, what, what should we do to the child when he gets so angry? How should we handle their anger? Then we deviate a bit and have more meaningful chat. So I think in that sense, we're still building a relationship. We're still not, um, we're still not, um, you know, we're still very mindful because we're mindful what we say. So we still bring mindfulness, right? And then we still can be very useful. So maybe in that way, we're still practicing. Oh. And that's what I think we can be like deviate away from like, you know, speech can harm people and, so as long as your speech start harming yourself and others, and then that's the time where we say, oh, just you know, I think that's the way how we can do it. Uh, that's my, that's only, I, I'm not sure what Bante would say, but that is how I think I try that way. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. Yolin exercised a good judgment when the chat has steered to kind of a gossip. Well, okay, okay, stop, stop, just <laughs> Yeah. That's good. I wonder if Singhui is a mother or? Uh, yes, I've got two, two boys. Did you share the same mother's network? <laughs> uh, not, not often. Yeah. often. Oh, okay. Well, that's good then. Okay. I think Wei Ken has comment, but let, let's wrap up the text first and then we can leave the comment to the, uh, to the end. Uh, this is the last paragraph, and we can. Would you like to nominate the next person to read? Sing uh, lah. Mm. Okay. Um, the tradition exercise of abstaining from either chatter refers only to avoiding engagement in such talk oneself. 
But today, it might be of value to give this factor a different slant, make imperative by certain developments peculiar to our own time. Unknown in the days of the Buddha and the ancient commentators, this is avoided exposure to the idle chatter constantly bombarding us through the new media of communication created by modern technology. An incredibly array of devices, television, radio, newspapers, pop journals, the cinema, turns out a continuous stream of needless information and distracting entertainment, the net effect of which is to leave the mind passive, vacant and sterile. All these developments, naively accepted as progress, threatened to blunt our aesthetic and spiritual sensitivities and deafen us to the higher call of the contemplative life. Serious aspirant on the path to liberation have to be extremely deserting in what they allow themselves to be exposed to. They would greatly serve their aspirations by including these sources of amusement and needless information in the category of either chatter and making an effort to avoid them. Okay, thanks, Ingrid. Yeah, so this is Biko Bodhi points out a new development peculiar to our own time, our age. So here he mentioned that television, radio, newspaper, pop journals, and cinema. But I think at the point he writes this, the internet is not so booming yet. Like all those tools like Facebook or Instagram or Reddit, which is the one that I, you know, indulge in the most. So that, that is my own personal idle chatter, I would say. Telegram and WhatsApp as well. Yeah. An incredible array of devices. So he warned us against all of this. So because it's so it's so out of habitual tendencies, I just whip up my phone, open Facebook, scroll, open Instagram, scroll, open Reddit, scroll. All this, you know, is also streaming of what what you mentioned here continuous stream of needless information and distracting entertainment yes and i think the issue is it's not 100 percent needless information sometimes uh, in between a few of that can be also useless it can be can also be useful you know like news yeah but it is very small percentage out of all those <laughs> out of all the scrolling, you know? Maybe, I don't know, 5%, 10%? Yeah. So with this kind of mix into, into the stream, I think maybe sometimes we also fool ourselves. Oh, we read just for the news, for the useful information. Yeah, probably this is what I do as well. I fool myself into thinking, ah, this is good for me. Yes, so... I guess this is how I relate to this paragraph. So how about you guys? Just now we can have comments, is it? Yeah. <clears throat> I was gonna comment on Singhvi's question. I think it's a really good question. How do we how do we note? How do we see that okay, this is not something appropriate? Maybe I should, maybe I should change the topic. I think Sister Jolene has said it very well. I think most of the most of the uh, ideas and suggestions she gave were really good, were really helpful. Um, instill, she said, instill useful speech, right? Yeah, I think that that's the one, right? If 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 you find that there's no sort of purpose or there's no use or effectiveness in in that speech, um, sort of change it a little bit. Um, instill useful speech. With some people, it's easier to do it. Like uh, sometimes I try to among some friends or among my family, especially. Sometimes we always try to bring it back to the dharma always trying to find okay what what is the reflection uh, for this for this issue right or for this topic so that that is sometimes easier to do uh, especially if they already know you and they already know uh, you know you're in a dharma group for example then okay then you can sort of try to bring it back to the dharma or try to say oh okay you know the buddha said this about this topic okay then that's very useful speech right 
Uh, but some people I know, like for, for colleagues, uh, sometimes for work colleagues, yeah, it's, it's harder to do that because they will just ignore you, which is which is okay, la, I guess. Sometimes they'll just end the conversation, which is also useful. Sometimes you use the Buddha's teachings to end the conversation, which is actually pretty, pretty useful also. Yeah. So another thing that uh, another thing that I wanted to point out is be aware of the purpose of the conversation. Sometimes it can go to arouse defilements. For example, um, sometimes we we like to do comparisons and then build our ego. Very common. Um, and anyone can do this. Uh, like colleagues can do this. Like mothers can also do that when they compare their children's achievements and so on. Uh, I, I know that uh, because when I was younger, yeah, it happens a lot. Uh, when I was younger, my mother would tell me about other mothers' children's story, uh, a lot of stories. So yeah, that happens a lot. So be aware of the purpose of that conversation, whether it's to, to build your ego or to just engage in, just now Bhikkhu Bodhi said it well, right? Uh, engage in spicy spicy content for your mind to feed on it and so on or whether there is there is a direction to the conversation yeah and whether it's to help like, um just now Marcel and Jolien said it well right if you if you want to know more about someone's life to care for them uh, to, to try to help them those are those are good intentions and that would be useful speech so um what Jolien said uh, number one instill useful speech number two maybe change the conversation right uh Jolien said deviate from the topic. Yeah, change the topic of conversation sometimes also helps. This one requires a bit of skill, uh, right? This one needs some practice. Uh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but I think Jolene said it well. Yes. Yeah, actually, we can made a really good point, which I think when we try to bring back the discussion back to the Dharma, right? Isn't this what the Buddha usually do? You know, let me share with you one. Do you, do you know the Sutta about the sixth direction? Sigalo Vada Sutta. Yeah. So let me share quickly. Sigalo Vada Sutta. So on one occasion, okay, a young householder named Sigalaka arose early and then out of ritual, he with palms together held up in reference. He was paying respect to the six directions. And then the Buddha actually used this, you know, used this a habit of his, ritual of his, and ask him, why have you risen in the early morning and set out to worship, worship in such a way? Okay, and then the young man explained, this is just a ritual tradition, holding sacred at my father's request. That's why I do it this way. And then the Buddha very skillfully, you know, used these six directions to to point the householder Sigalaka towards the Dharma. Yeah, the whole sutta is really long, but uh, the gist of it is that, let's see, yeah. He, when he, he still, you know, asked the house elder to continue doing the sixth direction, but imbued with the Dharma inside, see, by abandoning the four impure actions, Refrains from harmful deeds. Yeah. Avoid six ways of squandering wealth. Yeah. When these 14 harmful things are removed. And then the noble disciple, now with the six directions protected, has entered upon a path for conquering the both worlds. Yeah. Uh, you can read the whole sutta, I just paste it in the chat. Yeah. So so I think this is a one skill that the Buddha, of course, excels, you know. So like we can say, this is some skills that we can develop. But how far we can develop, yeah, that is up to individuals' cultivation. Okay, that's uh, all. One, one last quick note, very quick note, just on the Bhikkhu Bodhi's passage, just now on the social media, right? Yeah, sometimes, and, and also what Marcel said, well, social media. Sometimes, if you want to know what is idle chatter, that, that is idle chatter. Like a lot of things you see on social media is idle chatter. So, so sometimes I, I notice my tendency is mindless entertainment. You know, sometimes you don't know the purpose. You just scroll, you, you, you just spend time, half an hour, one hour, and you just scroll through Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is. And like, really, there's no point to it. You just spend one hour doing nothing, really. <laughs> just scrolling through it and, and just a feeding on feeding on entertainment. Yeah. So that happens very... Mm, it, it's a very common tendency and and that is I think that's a classic uh, that's a classic classic uh, 
example of idol entertainment these days. Yeah. Yeah. There is surprisingly a lot to talk about this idol chatter. So before we wrap up for today, any of you guys want to share? <laughs> it's interesting to hear from different perspectives, from a mother, from volunteering perspective, from Waken's colleagues, lunch talk. Yeah. So all of this and social media. <laughs> any of you have other interesting story to share? personal ones or yes, Ingrid, yeah. I just want to quickly point out that um, just now when y'all mentioned about having um, the, the, the useful speech so, so you know I think uh, I think my son will always say you know talking to you is very boring <laughs> like you know and whatever must have a moral of the lesson you know so it's like I don't talk to you yeah so 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 we really need to have that skill to do it properly <laughs> Yeah, this is a good point because even though our intention is good and sometimes it's also our delivery that, you know, when we have good intention but we deliver it in a, you know, boring, sleepy way and then people will not get interested. So this is something I'm learning as well and how to deliver my message in a more engaging way so that people actually listen, you know. Uh, I you know I can say one sentence that in a very boring monotone voice, but I can also package in a way that's very uh, engaging, entertaining, and like kind of an explosive way. You know all this panache, showmanship. I think this is the difference between a good speaker and a great speaker. Good speaker, they also have good messages, but people stop listening at some point because they lost the attention to this speaker. But great speaker, they can engage in this, listen to this speaker for hours, you know, because they are so entertaining and they're so inspiring. People like Obama. And yeah, I have my own idol, which I maybe I can share next time. Hmm. I think we can start with being an example ourselves. Um, the best way of um, I think <clears throat> it's often example. We be the example and show them rather than talk too much sometimes because sometimes when you talk too much, people think you are like, you know, telling them. or Preaching. Yeah, pre what's the right word? Pre preaching uh, like a Dharma talk. So I think especially to the people around us, we just do our own example. If we are always more calm, we are always more able to uh, be more useful and more kind, more calm. We show examples like that to the people around us. I think that is already the best. Um, you know, I think there are many ways to convey a Dharma, but our actions tell a thousand words. So I think that is actually something not to be neglected because our actions are controlled by our thoughts although not through our speech, but that is very, very important. So we can do that way, um, especially with family members. I find not everyone, you know, study Dharma, or even if they study, they may not want to hear some things, you know, and they don't like to be like preached to. So uh, I feel that, um, not, uh, not I feel, but I just um, kind of like suggest to myself, okay, I just show la, you know, don't talk first, just show la. Just show first. Then if the child um, or my mother felt that, eh, start, to, start to ask. When they start to ask, ah, I know they already got interested. That will be a better time because that's the time their mind is open and that's the time they are more willing to uh, hear what we're about to say. So if we try one way, it didn't work. Another way is just from our own example. I think that maybe that's another way of Delivery, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think what Julie mentioned, if the listener already think of it as a preach or as a lecture, then whatever message we're trying to convey would probably not sink in, you know. So it really depends on how skillful we are in packaging our message. Yeah, I, I see, I've noticed this in a lot of great speakers even when they try to 
uh, give suggestions or improvements, they really package it in a super nice way. But in the end, the message still gets delivered. Yeah, so we can say, bringing in the Dhamma might end the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any of you have any more sharing before we wrap up for today? Okay, sorry for going over time, but I think today's sharing is really interesting <laughs> to see, to hear a different perspective from all of you. If not, then let's do a dedication. Yen Xiao San Zhang Zhu Fan Nao, Yen De Zhe Hui Zhen Ming Nao, Pu Yen Zhu Zhang Xi Xiao Zhu, Shi Shi Chang Jing Pu Sa Dao. Amitabha. Till we meet again, may we be guided by the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. And have a useful chatter Saturday ahead. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.